Yeah. Even even though uh, we're doing a short episode, uh, I'll uh, I'll take a crack at uh, spin out some Harvard theology if you got a couple of minutes. Yeah, let's do it to it. All right, cool. We'll pop it up here. We'll, uh, talk, Rob, it's time to wrap it up here. So Harvard yes. theology, boom. Rob, boom. Here, my yeah. So uh, what I want to talk about is the truth, and. Um, how important is the truth? Because we all have our own values. That means it's going to be, it's going to rank higher on certain people's list than on others. For me, truth is very important. It's necessary. Yet at the same time, is I don't need for everyone to know the truth. So I don't, often go out of my way to correct people if they misreport something it's not something i usually feel the obligation for because i figure like well they believe it they're silly whatever but if you do that enough and you let the bullshit stay out there long enough then it becomes common law truth to the basic thinker and i know that true i i know that as well you know so I have this podcast, so that inspires me uh, to uh, spit a little more truth, feel a little more motivated to to maybe do like some corrections where normally I would just let it pass by and say, huh, they're silly. You know, I've said before, I've never, ever read um, a report of my income, what I'm making with any company that's anywhere near what um what the truth is but at the same time i don't really feel like correcting it but i have responded to it just to say i wonder like do they make that up or does someone else make that up and, and then lie to them and they actually have a source but either way it's not important to me that everybody knows that particular truth um but then i personally won't lie about it i just have my own boundaries like everybody should have you should have your own boundaries you should know where your boundaries are the less that you compromise your own boundaries the happier you are with yourself i mean i know a lot of people that maybe they're wrestlers like me and they'll do an interview and say oh man she asked me about our sex life i wish i wouldn't have gotten into that or whatever you just weren't prepared like whatever your boundaries are be comfortable with that and when they get there talk around it or let them know like uh, hey you're gonna have to keep you know keep uh keep dreaming about it whatever um so it's not like i need everybody to know what the exact truth is however i feel like we are living tomorrow's history and so if we bullshit and we fuck up all the facts boom that becomes the truth and that does bother me um i've said this many times I'm the most honest person that I know. And when I say that, I'm always surprised that nobody disputes it. Nobody ever says, no, I'm the most, you know, they look at me and I think they probably think I'm lying right now. They probably think I'm full of shit when I say that, you know, it's like some people probably think honest people don't really need to tell people that they're honest. I'm actually proud of it. You know, it's a quality that I'm proud of. That's why I'm talking about it right now, about the truth. Um, there's so many myths about me out there and there always will be, you know, uh, I've heard or read that I have like a, a federal ID that allows me to, uh, uh, to smoke weed and the president can't fuck with me, uh, <laughs> from, from that to being on the cover of high times magazine. Guess what? That didn't even happen. That's just like one of those myths. And it's like, I just let people think it i've read that i found a time machine in pennsylvania and went back in time there's always stuff out there you know especially when you're of a status like i am and i've been around for hundreds of years so there's going to be a lot of legend a lot of myths like andre the giant half of his stories you're like is that really true i just saw your brother by the way on jake the snake show yeah jake Jake talking about a story of Andre the Giant where uh, Dick Murdoch and um, who was the other guy? Um, fuck. Mm, 
another big dude anyway, but they went to jump Andre at a bar and he threw him. Blackjack Mulligan? It might have been. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was because yeah. Yeah, I think I heard that story. They were both Blackjack Mulligan stories. One was, yeah, one was that. And uh, so anyway, um, Andre threw both of them through two plate glass windows, went out, held the cab down, opened up the trunk, threw them in the trunk, got in the cab, went to the hospital, told the hospital, take care of these guys and send them back to the bar. And that took the cab back. You know, that's, is that, did that really happen like that? I mean, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> it, you know, that's, that's going to happen. Um, and not to mention a lot of real uh, facts of my life are pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Anyway, you know, the, uh, the cover shot of high times magazine, that was actually inserted in Ozzy Osbourne's on the cover. However, I don't care, you know, to ruin people's memories of it. But in real life, I did debate um, the, the the former drug czar, uh, Barry McCaffrey, on, on national television. You know, uh, that's, you know, that's a that's a pretty big uh, thing. But for me, I'm overly honest. My evil ex hated that. And I, and, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, because some people, if they say they're overly honest, they're just negative people. And they feel like I'm just being honest. And they feel right. I don't feel obligated to to tell people something just because I think it's true. But if somebody asks me something, uh, what I give them is going to be uh, is, is going to be the truth. You know, um, the fans on social media. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> because of their relationship with the truth here's what my legacy is going to go down as which is all bullshit in, in in their community right everything there's so much bullshit and i just haven't bothered to comment on you know like when i write the book it's going to be inconsistent with uh, with a lot of the stories that are complete bullshit. You know, I've heard uh, idiots on social media complaining uh, about uh, no job Rob um, refusing to put young talent over. Never happened. That's not even the way the business works. You know, they're going to think that uh, I was, uh, me and Sabu were smoking weed, got arrested, and I got fired from WWE when I was champion. Like, I made a bad decision at that moment when I was on top. None of that's true. I smoked weed the whole way up the ride. And at that moment, not only were we not smoking, I didn't even get arrested. And I know people are going to give pushback on that because you can probably hear me saying uh, that I got arrested, like, over the last several years. I just recently found out that um, it, I wasn't arrested because I've learned a little bit about the law. And what happened was um, they took all our luggage out right there on the side of the road, went through everything. And then I drove to the police station and then gave them some money. And then I drove away. You can't drive while you're arrested or even being detained. Yeah. And so, and so anyway, that just happens. And besides people are going to think, that my brain is fried from concussions. That's another thing with legacy. People think that they have what a better memory than me. That their uh, that their their brain works faster. I don't know how they somehow feel like I'm inferior to them because I've had concussions. But I think if you watch this show, not only can you see. Uh, that my brain functions fine. Uh, and not only can you also see, like I mentioned before, that I smoke a couple of joints and I'm, and I don't get baked or fucked up, but everyone still wants to know how high was he? Um, th this is all part of my legacy and people are going to think that I have CTE. That's what the idiots are, are going to be talking about. And of course I don't have CTE. CTE is a degenerating progressively, worsening disease like alzheimer's it gets worse and worse and then you don't remember your name i don't have it i don't even have long-term brain damage that anybody except for one idiot on social media knows about and uh, 
not to mention I went through all the tests and neurologists and all the doctors and, and went through everything. And still, because the fans are idiots, it's going to go down in history, RVD at CTE. And uh, that's why he doesn't wrestle. Because they don't care about the truth. Perception is reality. They hear something, good enough for them. They're going to take that and, uh, and run with it. And, and by the way, quick point. Last week I started something I didn't and I didn't finish it. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah because uh, Katie changed my perspective on this. I, I kind of thought that it was like trolling because when it comes to cannabis and I'm an advocate, I'm a facts and numbers guy. I feel like I'm above the level of dude, let's stand on our head and go you know, do a gravity bong, whatever, dude. I fight for the everyone's rights and I have to lower myself sometimes to connect with that level because um, that is a big part of the community of uh, of cannabis. But the point I wanted to make, when people try to discredit whatever, uh, I'm doing whatever I'm saying with, dude, how high are you? Dude, you're so big. And, and then to them, I, I, started, I felt like that was kind of like trolling. Like these guys... Like they're trying to discredit me. And Katie changed my perspective on that. She said, no, they're connecting with you because those are your people. You know, those are your people that are that are like, dude, they want to know, like, how high are you? Because they think it's cool about you. And she changed my perspective on that to where I'm like, you know, I think she's right. At least some of the times, not all the time. I mean, depending on how it's worded. But I yeah. get I get that now. So so instead of feeling insulted by it, um, I, I recognize it you know, for, for what it is. So I appreciate her, uh, um, changing my thoughts on that because as you know, I have a lot of idiots on social media that are committed, committed to disagreeing with me <laughs> or misunderstanding me. And, um, and I'm going to start blocking them. I just decided that if someone I read today, someone said, don't block them, put them on mute. That way uh, they still read, but you can't see them. And that sounds like a good idea. But as long as I've been on Twitter, I've blocked like just a handful of people. It's it's just been something that I really didn't believe in, free speech and all. But when you look at it, like it's just negative energy from certain posts. And that's all they want is to, is to change your energy, to lower your frequency. Bah, nobody needs that. So, so I'm going to start doing that. And that's cool. And in the meantime, dude. Truth is pretty fucking important, man. It's real life. It's it's all relatable. When you tell lies, then you got to remember shit that you told. You got to cover them up. I mean, I used to think it was cool to, to be a player when I was young and stupid and have a bunch of girls and lie to them and, and fuck them over and stuff. Now I think what a piece of shit I was, you know? And, and if you're a piece of shit and you don't realize it yet, Hope maybe this will help you out, you know, and not everyone's in a position uh, like I am where they can have a complete foundation built from the ground up like I have so personally done that can afford the truth. Still, that's on you. That's you and your disingenuous life and you that got yourself in the predicament where you can't tell the truth and really... I don't think it's that important to everyone anyway, as much as it is to me. But like I say, right now, we are living tomorrow's history. I don't want to change it. That's all, dude. I like it, Rob. You know, it's good stuff because, yeah, it's neat, too, that Katie gave you that different perspective on it. Because, yeah, people, like, they want to connect with you. And that's like, hey, I smoke weed. I get high. And I know Rob gets high. That's something that I can't usually share with somebody maybe in my life, but I can share with Rob. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I yeah, I just take it as like I'm above that because as I've said, you know, for me it's the, I would quit smoking completely yeah. if that would make it more accessible to everybody that really needs it. I mean, it's my you know, my my interest in, in the agenda of ending prohibition is is not like a one of a selfish desire to to get fucked up because I don't get fucked up. You know, if you, if you see me on here getting fucked up, let me know. Right. I never, like I said last week, Rob, I never noticed. Like when you said you spoke to joints, I had no clue. <laughs> We've been recording how many episodes. And 
and that's not everybody, but that's me. And, and we're all individuals. You know, I have people tell me like, dude, come on. There's no way you don't get the munchies. I don't. And I'm not the only one. I know plenty of other um, functional tokers that don't get the munchies. Right, right. Well, yeah, I think it's good, too, to just be like, hey, if you mute them or if you block them, either way, it's like you're getting that negative energy out of there. But, like, it's like I always try to think, too, it's like Twitter only or the X, whatever it is now, is only 20 percent of the population. So, like, their perspective is skewed and it's always negative. It's just like, oh, I just I don't want to be accessible to to certain people or forms of life, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah. Before social media, you weren't, you know what I mean? Right. Like growing up, you couldn't just, I mean, just pick any any uh, random actor, you know, you couldn't just uh, get, you know, just send Robert De Niro a message, you know, right. you suck. I hate that mole on your face, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yep. <laughs> People do, and they don't realize that, uh, you know, they're, the more shit you put out there, the more you're just surrounding yourself with shit. You're like a dog stuck in a little dog pen cage and you're surrounding yourself with shit because that's all you put out there. That's it. That's it. Guys, we won't surround you with shit here on the Nine Podcast Network. No way. We got, we're on the Never. premiere. <laughs> if you want to catch it, every Friday at 420, we drop on the premiere streaming network, but you can catch us everywhere on Monday at 420 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Rob just conducted an interview with uh, Denise Salcedo, and uh, very good. So go out of your way to check that out. Um, Rob shares some cool insight on different things. Music, a cool perspective on music you have that we haven't touched upon, but you touched it on there. So check check it out there. Um, as far as anything else, yes, yeah, see Rob in Fairfield, New York City. August twentieth, uh, depending on when they listen to this, is the uh, Wrestle Bash Two. Boom, and coming up. This weekend, yeah. folks. At so. the uh, at Fairfield, New Jersey. Big Time Collectibles. Big time I guess Big Time Collectibles. Oh, AsylumWrestlingStore.com. So that's probably the vendor that's bringing me in. Oh, there you go. There you, there go. you go. How about that? And then, yeah, uh, coming up on Labor Day weekend, uh, we're going to see Rob at StarCast 6 in Chicago, Illinois. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Should be a good time. Uh, it's always a good time under that yes. Conrad promotion, so. And we'll see you there, right? Right. I will be there as well. So it'll be a little uh, little get-together kind of thing. We'll, uh, yeah. Nothing to be hanging out. 